Hi guys, welcome to Local Giving's YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk through Online Fundraisers 101, the basics of how to get started with fundraising pages. One of the key things that we at Local Giving offer to groups on our platform is the ability for individuals or fundraisers to set up their own fundraising pages that they manage themselves, but all the money is transferred to you and your main charity account. So I'm just going to run you through a quick overview of how to get started and a couple top tips that you can take on board to encourage your fundraisers and make sure that their campaigns are successful. So before we begin, I'm just going to talk you through quickly what we're going to go through today. To begin, we're going to go through the basic steps of how to set up a fundraising page. It's very quick and simple. Then we'll go through some top tips for finding fundraisers, some more top tips for encouraging and promoting your fundraisers once they've signed up, We'll go through some resources that Local Giving have that can help you, and then we'll talk about the benefits of having fundraisers on board. So to begin, to set up a fundraising page on Local Giving, the charity must be a member of Local Giving. So here I have the example of the Havering Association for People with Disabilities main charity account. If a fundraiser wanted to go and set up a fundraising page for Havering Association, they just click on this orange Fundraise for Us button that appears on the bottom right hand corner. Once the fundraiser is signed up, a charity will have a drop down button over on the left hand side here where all their fundraisers will be listed and a charity can have as many fundraisers as they'd like. So when the fundraiser clicks on that orange fundraise for us button, they'll be brought through to this page where they put in some basic details like their name and their email address. If they've already had a supporter account, so if they've already made a donation to your charity, they can log in using those details. Once they do that, they'll be brought through to this page where they'll create a title. So it could be, you know, Connor's bungee jump. And then they'll sort of fill in a story about who they are, why they're connected to your charity, what's motivated them to start fundraising, and maybe a little bit about why the charity is so important in the community. They'll be able to create their own URL. So it could be localgiving.org forward slash Connor's bungee jump. And then they'll be able to upload a photo of themselves preparing for their challenge or they can also use some of the stock photos of fundraisers that we have. So first things first, how to find fundraisers. Well, one good thing to do would be to spread the word on social media, put it out in a tweet, put it out on Facebook saying that you're looking for people to do a challenge for your charity. Maybe use some of the ideas over here on the right just to give people ideas about what they could do. Um, you know, a simple thing of maybe taking on a physical challenge that they'd maybe already be doing. So reach out to key marathoners, maybe do a new physical challenge like, I don't know, climb a mountain or walk to work every day for a week. A simple thing of giving something up for a week or a month, maybe going vegetarian for a week or vegan for a month, or even holding an event for you like a quiz night or some sort of other community event. Remember that you can also ask friends and family if they'd consider helping out. If anyone's ever expressed an interest in volunteering, this is a good way of getting them to do something useful for your charity. And um, remember to also publicize the campaign, maybe via a newsletter or an advert in a local newspaper. So if you're looking for fundraisers, don't be afraid to put the word out there that the charity is looking for people to give them a hand and raise funds. So it's easy to persuade people to fundraise for you if you ask. Just remember of all the different types of people you could ask connected with the charity. So that could be the trustees and the staff, or the volunteers and previous supporters, or even the service users of your charity yourself. People want to get involved and they want to be active. So try and think of the different sorts of people you could ask. And remember that fundraisers can help get around donor fatigue. If you're asking the same people for, the, for money and donations over and over again, fundraisers can help you get around that because they'll reach out to a new network of donors that you wouldn't normally be able to reach. We find with fundraisers that they'll ask their own friends and family and work colleagues who wouldn't otherwise be connected with your group and make them think about why they should make a donation and donate for the first time to your charity. So in preparation for this video, we called Lewis Wilde, who's the volunteer coordinator at St. Petrox Society, which is a homeless charity. And we asked her about a fundraising challenge that Leanne, Gina and Sam had done a couple of years ago. So Leanne, Gina and Sam did a 24 hour sleep out for the charity, which is obviously a good, 
you know, awareness raising event to do for a charity like uh, St. Petrox, they set themselves a challenge of raising £300 and absolutely smashed that target, got £440 in the end. And when I called Lewis, she said that local giving was a really easy tool to use because it was so shareable on social media and via email. And she said that in terms of looking out for people that would fundraise for them, they often asked local connections, friends of friends, and people who'd been engaged with the charity in the past. And then she found that by simply putting the message out there, people were voluntarily, you know, without being directly asked, signing up as fundraisers and taking on challenges. Uh, she also said that the people who had fundraised in the past tend to get sort of addicted to fundraising, and you'll find that if they have a fun experience, that they'll come back year after year, and they'll always be the sorts of people that you can rely on to raise money. So really making a push to recruit fundraisers can pay off because people tend to come back, and they're the people you can rely on. Remember that anyone that you signed up as a fundraiser will also become an ambassador for your cause. They'll be promoting your group on social media and amongst their own personal networks, driving new donors, but they'll also be raising awareness for what your charity does in the community and acting as an ambassador for your group. Because fundraisers are doing the fundraising themselves, it can be relatively light touch for charities as well. The real key tasks for you would be recruiting people to do it and then promoting them and motivating them as they take on their challenge. And always remember to support them and celebrate the key milestones and the key successes and just sort of highlight how grateful the charity is that they've taken on this challenge. We also called Nikki Heath, who's the director of the Yelini Therapy and Support Centre. And we wanted to speak with her about Adam, a fundraiser who took on a challenge with them a couple of months ago. He set himself a target of raising £315 and ended up raising exactly three times that. It was a really successful campaign and it was all off the back of a really imaginative and innovative idea. What Adam did was grow out his beard over 12 months and you can see the huge beard there over on the left. And then he took donations saying that if he reached his target, he would dye his beard a rainbow assortment of colors from right to left. He was true to his word and you can read more about it and see some pictures of the beard on our blog. But I called Nikki and asked from a charity's perspective, how did they find the process of having Adam raise money? And she said that fundraising is really hand in glove with raising awareness of who you are as an organization. So sort of going back to that, that idea that the fundraiser is not just raising funds, but they're also an ambassador for you and your community. I asked her for you know advice that she'd give to other groups who are looking to get fundraisers on board. And she said to come up with ideas, think outside the box a little bit, and people are more interested in things that they find interesting, amusing, or exciting. So try and think about the different things that, the different aspects of your charity that would interest people and entice them to make a donation. And Adam is certainly a good example of that. His idea was really eye-catching, it was really funny. He really uh, made an effort to reach out into different channels to try and get donations. He got the local barber shop involved. They did all the trimming and dyeing for free, and they also made a donation themselves. He also reached out to his workplace. He obviously had to get permission from his boss to grow a beard like that, because he was working in a business environment. The boss actually loved the idea and the business and the staff got involved and made donations themselves. So Adam's just a really terrific example of thinking outside the box and then putting a plan into action. So remember that you can think outside the box as well. If you think a marathon or a bungee jump or a cake sale, some of the tried and tested ways of fundraising will work for you, then by all means go for it. But remember that the internet and online fundraising offers a whole host of different things that you can do. Weird, wacky or wonderful ideas tend to get uh, on quite well. They tend to capture people's imagination in the internet age. So try and have a think about different things that your supporters would find funny or interesting and try and make it engaging for them. So over here on the right we have a resource about different uh, fundraising campaigns that have already been done on local giving and we've had things like you know face painting exercises, knit-a-thons, uh, mud assault courses, uh, people trying to set a world record, people wearing their underwear on the outside for the day, people wearing a onesie to the office for the day, uh, people putting on boxing nights, people taking a bath and baked beans. There's a never-ending list of things you can do. So just try and think outside the box uh, and try and come up with an idea that would interest your supporters and would interest fundraisers to get involved. Also worth 
uh, sticking to a plan and helping your fundraiser come up with a plan of action. So try and manage uh, their sort of time, money and expectations and remember that promotion is key so help them get the word out. So over here on the right we've got a sort of six tips for fundraisers and basically we're suggesting that you come up with a clear call to ask, make sure that the fundraiser is linking in this fundraising campaign with a particular project or particular service that your charity is doing to make it tangible and relatable for supporters so they know what their money is going towards. Set your fundraiser a realistic target and make sure that it's something that it's attainable but something that's worthwhile. So try and set them something that they're able to work towards and actually achieve. Remember to promote their page. That goes for them on their own social media channels, but also use your charity social media accounts and email newsletters to promote their fundraising page. Keep the supporters up to date. Make sure it's sort of like a journey for them that they find out that someone's decided to do it. Then they see the preparation for the fundraising event or the fundraising challenge. Then they see the donations coming through and how they can donate. And then they sort of see the whole process at the end, how much you raised, how you got on. Always useful to use videos and images on social media to tell that story. So like a video of someone training for a marathon as they jog or, you know, a picture of someone taking on that big bean challenge. Images and video on social media are just a really great tool of communicating the story of what the fundraising fundraiser is doing for your charity with the wider public. And remember, always thank your donors. The fundraiser, if they've been successful, will have reached out to a whole new list of people for you, uh, their own friends and family, their own work colleagues, people that wouldn't otherwise have made a donation to your charity. So remember to try and convert them to be regular supporters of your cause. Uh, remember that fundraisers are really social media friendly. They tend to tell a very interesting story because they're an individual who's been motivated to do this for charity. That tends to capture people's imaginations. So just remember that social media can be used to find fundraisers, so to recruit people, uh, also to drive donations once they've been set up, and then at the end to thank all the people who made a donation to the fundraiser. Over here on the right, we've got some Facebook and Twitter examples about fundraisers that are linked to our April Local Hero campaign. So feel free to pause the video and have a look and model tweets on that. Remember also that Local Giving provides a whole host of resources that you can use. So you can see these resources by logging in and going to your fundraising toolkit on your charity dashboard. But you can also see them on our homepage on the resource page. We've got loads of social media resources around Twitter and Facebook banners. We've got lots of tips and guides for you as a charity and for the fundraiser. And then we've got lots of templates for local media press releases, newsletters and emails that are just meant to help you uh, when you're trying to get the word out about your charity and something for you to model and work off. Uh, just to briefly touch on the effectiveness of fundraisers, it's becoming an increasingly popular way of fundraising online. On local giving, our data shows that each fundraiser brings in an average of 16 new donors to a charity, so 16 people who hadn't previously donated to the charity, and raised around £500 per charity. So they're a really simple way of raising money online, and I'd really encourage groups who are finding it difficult to sort of transition into online fundraising to think about getting fundraisers signed up. So just to recap, today we covered how to set up a fundraising page, some top tips for finding fundraisers, some more top tips around encouraging and promoting people once they've signed up. We will talk through Local Giving's fundraising resources, and then we briefly touched on the benefits of having fundraisers on board. If anyone has any questions, please know that you can call us on 0300-111-2340. You can also email us at help at localgiving.org or send us a tweet at local giving. Thanks for watching and look out for more campaigns and more webinars and tutorials around fundraising from local giving.